They are big and experienced. With Cavill, Roberson, Langston, the leader, Overton, and Conrad. It is third down and four. The opening possession of the game, and the Sooners have the ball just outside their own 42. 13 and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Fake to Collier. Gundy on the option. Has the first down as he dives forward to about the 47 or 48. Mike Hendricks, number 40, the strong safety on the tackle. Watson, Watson Brown talked all week long about having to use the play action to throw the football effectively against the wrecking crew. Right here, they had an end around, but it didn't work out. Gundy keeps the ball, turns it up, turns it upfield, and looks like he makes a good play out of him and gets the first down. I think he knew where the marker was when he got just beyond it. First and 10 at the 48. Wing set for the Sooners. And a delay to Collier. No, it's Chandler, Dwayne Chandler, the running back. And he may have even lost a yard. Sam Adams, 95, and 37, Larry Jackson make the tackle. Well, that wrecking crew of A&M, just a very experienced and mobile defense. They have tremendous speed to go along with great size. Plus, they seem to show up at the park angry. <laughs> Every day, the biggest, biggest man down there they're going to have to tackle is just that tackleman. The nose guard, Watson Brown, felt like if he could control him and get him to one side or another, they could have success running this football or throwing the football by eliminating the pass rush. Dwayne Chandler, the long setback, and Gundy calls timeout. On second and 12, with 12-13 to go in the first quarter, no score. We'll be back in just a minute. Gary Gibbs, head coach of the Sooners in his fifth year, 30-14 and two to this point, and his club facing a second down and 11, just outside their own 46. Gundy under pressure. Somehow he got away but falls down at the 40. Eric England, Steve Solari, both crashing in there. This is the pressure that Watson was worried about all week long. They bring two inside linebackers, and it just doesn't hold up on the outside. England comes from the outside. Solari's there. Gundy has no place to go. He hits the ground. Now it's third down and 18. Solari, a senior from Sugarland, Texas, outside Houston. And he has protection. Completed to Corey Warren, but he's thrown out of bounds. A gain of just about nine. Ray Mickens, number 24, who had a fine game last week against LSU, makes the stop. So the Sooners will have to punt it away with 11-18 left to play in the first quarter after their opening possession. Surprised to see so much pass so early. Very few running attempts right there. Just a chance to get something outside, something safe, and not be careless with the football. I think soon here, Oklahoma is going to have to open up that running game and try to stretch the Aggies out. Aaron Glenn back to receive one of the A&M defensive backs, Scott Blanton, a junior now from right here in Norman, who's kicked so well for the Sooners, hangs it high. And Glenn will let it roll and goes out of bounds inside the 10. They mark it at the 8. Fine punt into the win by Blanton of 43 yards. Well, here's Corey Pulling. He has really done a fine job in an offense that doesn't necessarily feature the quarterback. No, it doesn't. We know why. You've got Rodney Thomas and Hill, of course, is out. But Thomas, they will try to run the football. They've got a senior line up front. Five of the six, including the tight end, are all seniors. And they will honk honk it at you, believe me. Well, backed up as they are now, first and ten at their own eight, you might expect them to start pounding it out of there. Corey Pollock is sophomore from Deer Park, Texas. Fake. No, oh, he's going to throw. And he has Matthews open, and Matthews with a first down fumble. Nope, that's his shoe. He lost his shoe. Larry Bush 
Number 31 making the tackle in the secondary as Matthew Shue pops straight off. Rodney Thomas and Cliff Gross in the backfield. Tony Harrison, the wide receiver. Ryan Matthews, who caught that ball. And Greg Shorp, one of their main go-to receivers at tight end. Wesley Harrison, Dowson, Collins, and Matthew. Well, all seniors except for one. And that is a big freshman up front. Gain of 13. Thomas to the 30 in the grasp of Cedric Jones, number 57. What you're going to see all day now from a and is a lot of traps, a lot of counter road tees. Right now, we're going to watch the center right on Korea. Korea gets moved out in the 34. You can't get moved out that easy. If your nose guard gets moved out like that in the 34, you're going to have a hard time stopping the run. Well, that center nose guard matchup on both sides of the ball run is going to be interesting. Exactly. Too. Take to Thomas. Pulling has it tipped. Excellent pressure by Aubrey Beavers, number 56. A senior out of Houston and certainly one of the defensive leaders for Oklahoma. Beavers is a force. He's already projected right now as being a first round, second round draft pick. He'll come from the outside here at the top of your screen. A running back tries to pick him up, but that matchup's not going to work. He just gets a hand on it. Had a, two PBUs last week, passes broken up. Here's another one already today. Third down and three. Pollock with a little underneath flip to the running back, Leland McElroy, and he stopped short of the first down. Joe Correa and Cedric Jones. Center defense that time doing a real good job of staying at home and staying on your keys. Whenever you stay on your keys and watch what you're supposed to watch and not get caught up in too many different things, usually things work out okay. James Bennett to punt and Darius Johnson to receive, drove and driven back to the 21. Slipping and falling just outside the 26. Larry Walker makes the stop. No score. The Sooners, after a 58-yard punt, go back on offense with 8.58 remaining in the first quarter. No score in the first quarter in the kicking game. Already evident here at Norman, Oklahoma, OU and Texas A&M. Wayne Chandler behind Cale Gundy. And Gundy to throw on first down. Has it knocked away, and it falls incomplete. Pressure from Eric England again, number 92, and let's go down and get a report from Dean Blevins. Guys, heat could be a factor today. It's about 90 degrees. As you can see here, it's about 110, though, on the turf. Cramping has been a problem, at least it was for Oklahoma in game one. Both teams drinking a lot of fluids. We'll keep an eye on the heat. The wind a factor as well, 15 miles an hour right now at the back of the Aggies. Back to you. Thank you, sir. Dino, you look good without your coat on, Danny. You might want to take that tie off before too long if the temperature remains the same. Second down, 10. Underneath handoff to Chandler, dropped. And the Aggies think they've got it. They do. Eric England, number 92, in there again. The first turnover of the game, and it comes inside the 25. They were just coming with a simple back around inside handoff, and it looks like they just didn't get the handoff correct between uh, Gundy in the back. The ball's floating around now. It's anybody's football. These are the kind of mistakes that Gibbs says we got to eliminate early. As you can see right near, the back is on the ground. He was falling before he even got the handoff. Yeah, I think Chandler lost his Chandler footing. Chandler lost his footing before he even got the ball. Never got to the ball. AM first and 10. Rodney Thomas hit immediately in the middle by Joe Correa, the middle guard. Let me clear up one thing I said earlier. Joe Correa in that 34, very important. A 34, of course, three down linemen, four linebackers. You've got gaping holes because you've only got three down linemen. That man, because he's a center of it, has got to keep his poise. He's got to hold his ground. Everybody else on that defense is on a string to him. Big Joe, 6'4", 290, and a senior anchoring the middle of that line. Second down and nine. 
Pulling the throw. Looking for his tight end and completing it to Greg Sharp, who is out of bounds at about the 17. John Anderson, the strong safety, driving him out there. He'll be about four yards short of the first down. We have motion here. The motion is done for two reasons, to determine man or zone coverage. Right now, they're in a man coverage. He's being covered by the strong safety, John Anderson. Anderson's late getting over there. It's a hard play to stop anyway because of the way they throw the football, but it's something you just got to give the offense and line up and do it again. Third down and four. Good protection, pulling, intercepted. Picked off by John Anderson. perhaps flirting with too much passing right now. They're in a, mix, a cover two defense. The safeties are deep. They've just got the halves of the field. He steps right in front of the tight end, makes a good play in the ball. And you want to talk about pressure to Quasi coming from the outside here. These hits do pay dividends. He will remember that hit the next time he's up there going to pass. Good pressure all the way around the field. They come up with a big play. Oklahoma needs that right now. Each team with a turnover now. First and 10, Oklahoma. Thomas trying to cut it back and picks up a couple of yards. Out to about the 13 in the grasp of Lance Tackleman, the nose guard. Let's take a look at that wrecking crew with Sam Adams, love that name, Tackleman, the nose guard, and Eric England, who's already been on some big plays. The four linebackers, Soleri, Atkinson, Jackson, and Shorter. And then the secondary, Glenn, Mickens, Hendricks, and White. They are as solid front to back as you could want. Very experienced. Second and eight. Gundy flips it. Incomplete intended for the fullback, Dwayne Chandler. They've got all the right play action working in the background, in the backfield, like uh, Watson Brown said they would. They got to hold on to those kind of footballs right there. He had so much running room, Steve. It was unbelievable. I said Chandler was actually Collier, 33, not 32. So it'll be third down and eight. Thomas cannot get outside because Sam Adams was waiting for him. Sam Adams, all Southwest Conference last year. First rounder coming into the draft. I'm surprised that Oklahoma didn't come with three wide outs being where they are. They come with the option, once again, going back to Watson Brown, very unpredictable. Hard to say what he's going to do. It's a loss of six. Blanton will have to back right up to the end line and get it away quickly. Oh, he might have a rough in the kicker here, Steve. I don't know if AM got a hand on it or not, but a flag is down as they did run into Scott Blanton. And we will await the call from John Laurie, the referee. It's only a 24-yard punt, and if they touch the ball, then they can go ahead and crash into Blanton. But if they Absolutely. didn't... Absolutely. Crystal foul. Yep. Apparently, they did not hit the ball. The ball was tipped, but not by the person that ran into the kicker. Crystal foul, roughing the kicker. The Aggies had 10 men up, definitely telling you they're coming after it, and they had some problems in the center. Just everybody's up there right now. Blanton looks like he's on stride, but apparently not on stride enough. That ball nearly blocked. From this angle, it doesn't look like the ball was, uh, I don't know, on second, on second thought, it does look like it was tipped right there. Well, 38 is Reggie Graham, and 23 is Keith Mitchell. They were both in there. They both ran into Blanton, and it looked like perhaps Graham did get a hand on the ball. It looked like Graham got a hand on the ball. But you think Blanton's going to tell anybody? <laughs> <laughs> 
No way. He's got to come with his best acting job right then. So the centers get the ball back and the penalty moves the ball out to about the 18. As you see no score 633 in the first quarter and now referee John Laurie over explaining it to R.C. Slocum who of course is not in total agreement. First and ten Sooners from their own 18. Collier, the lone setback. Option again. Gundy's got a hole. Has enough for the first down, a gain of 11. CFA College Football here on ABC Sports being brought to you today by the Heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. Gundy now has rushed the ball on the option four times, gained 13 yards, and run. That's something that he, we didn't see in looking at the tape of the first game this year. Well, that's something new for AM. They they hadn't seen that themselves. So they're making them think out there. They're doing exactly what they said they try to do to him. First down, Oklahoma. Thomas banging straight ahead. Out to near the 36, Jason Atkinson, senior linebacker out of Houston, number 43, makes the stop. Allen, right now, big game last week, 204 yards, couple touchdowns, just an eye formation, lead, pounding the football. They're trying to mix it up on him. Allen, a very sought-after high school player, and he is only a freshman out of Winniewood, Oklahoma. He gains seven at second down three. Collier with a big hole. Steve Soleri finally brings him down, but Ben Cavill, number 63, sprung him with a good block. They trap the outside linebacker right here, comes up the field shorter. You can see the block. Cavill comes out, gets a good block on Atkinson. And there they're off to the races. Good seam. That's all they look for in a play like this is just lanes and seams. They don't need a whole lot. Just enough to get in there and get going. Big Ben Cavill, 285-pound junior out of Lamarck, Texas. And the first down Sooners at their own 49. Bundy with lots of time. Over the middle, complete to the tight end, Ricky Brady. Brady gains about nine before Atkinson and Soleri bring him down. Well, this is a guy they want to throw to ten times a game if they can. Projected first round pick, has all the credentials. He's been bothered by injuries, and that's really got Watson Brown upset a little bit. Ed Gibbs, they'd like to use him a lot more. He compliments Warren and Hall with their vertical stretch down the field. Brady, a senior from Oklahoma City. Sooners with second and one at the AM 42. Collier has the first down and falls forward to about the 37. Tripped up by Lance, tackled in the nose guard 58. Not a bad play there, kind of a waste down second and one. A lot of teams will fake that play and just throw it upfield, knowing they got two more downs to get one yard. Tackleman appears to be doing a decent job so far. That's one thing we wanted to watch, Ron, was that middle matchup. But the Sooners, in spite of the tackles he's making, are gaining yardage through them. Well, they mentioned that AM will be reckless at times. They'll just come on a blitz for no reason, and they're hurting with that right now. It's another Oklahoma first down. Collier runs into his own man, the blocker, Joe Carollo, number 68. And Antonio Shorter and Larry Jackson bring him down. That didn't develop exactly like they'd hoped. Carolla and Langston, they consider those two guys their meet up front. I mean, that is where their strength is. And they'll try to get a lot of stuff in there, a lot of leads, a lot of OTs right up in that center, work on, on tacklemen, and, uh, and try to just get things moving down the field in a consistent fashion. Three wideouts in the game. Juwan Penny, number 89, in at wide receiver. And Gundy rolled a short rollout, throwing back. Incomplete and a flag. It was intended for Penny. Tough, tough call here, Steve. 
Penny went on the post corner route. Aaron Glenn, one of the best cornerbacks in the nation right now. He's with them all the way. You're going to see a rollout by Gundy. Penny is going on the corner route. He's going right toward the pylon. The ball's thrown inside. He makes an adjustment. Aaron Glenn is right there. And I don't know why they could they call that interference. He's got to make an adjustment on the ball, just like Juwan Penny had to make an adjustment on the ball. The poorly thrown ball, they're both adjusting. They get Glenn for interference. You know, as a corner, you try to keep your head out there. You try to stay in the game and just play no matter what happens. But when things like that happen, it's very, very difficult because that is probably one of those calls that could have gone either way. That was a very, very marginal call, and it gives Oklahoma a first down at the 20. Pitch back to Thomas. He slips as he tries to cut back and maybe gains a yard on the play. You know, that's unfortunate for the slip there because I think he had something up front. They had some seams. They had the gaps they wanted. Just a little toss. Kind of a, a, a difference between a, a quick toss and a, and a draw read, a delayed draw. Something that worked real well for him last week against TCU. This is the 11th play now of this drive. And remember, the Sooners punted from their own end zone. AM hit with a penalty then of roughing the kicker and then the interference. But Oklahoma with a second and nine. Andy with the out route for Albert Hall, incomplete. Hall out of bounds again, Aaron Glenn, 31 on the coverage. Aggies doing a real good job of being disciplined in their man zone combinations. That time they're playing a zone toward the field and a man combination on the boundary side. That can give the receivers and the quarterback some, some difficult looks because it's hard to get a pre-snap read on it. Aggie fans trying to exhort their defense on third down and nine. Corey Warren going for the ball and contact made by Ray Mickens, but no flag. It looked like Warren might have slipped even before the contact was made. Yeah, it did, and uh, he had a little out route going. Mickens is inside man-to-man. -man. He's got no help in the inside. Under control, Warren slips right there. Mickens makes a drive in the ball. They, they tangle up feet. That's incidental contact. They can't call anything. Good defensive play by Mickens there. It brings up a field goal situation. Scott Blanton on to do the kicking. Joey Alfred, the holder, will mark it at the 27. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. And it is good. Blanton knocks it through with 2 minutes and 18 seconds. Remaining in the first quarter, Oklahoma scores first. They lead Texas A&M 3-0. That is the 15th straight field goal kicked by Scott Blanton. R.C. Slocum obviously has gotten the Aggies on a roll as head coach at Texas A&M. And in fact, the last time they lost a regular season game was back in 1991. It was here in the state of Oklahoma to Tulsa. And in fact, if you want to find an Achilles heel since R.C. Slocum's taken over at A&M, it is the fact that non-conference games, and particularly on the road, have been a problem for the Aggies. And it's a little bit different story at home, but when they get on the road, especially in a place like Norman, where it's going to be loud, everybody's going to be against you, things work out a little bit different. Leland McElroy. Back to receive, along with Typhle McMullen. And McMullen in the end zone, so it'll be first and 10 at the 20. Hey, a reminder that Monday night, league MVP Steve Young of the 49ers will lead San Francisco into that dog pound in Cleveland. They'll battle Bernie Kosar and the Browns live at 8 Central right here on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. 49ers and the Browns from the pound. How'd you like that, Ron, when you played at Cleveland, the dog I didn't pound. like it, throwing bones at you and everything. <laughs> Made you want to get loose on another end of the stadium. That's because you didn't play for Cleveland. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> AM first and 10 from the 20. Rodney Thomas nowhere. The Sooners really did a good job of jamming it at the line of scrimmage. Mario Freeman, number 44, and Mike Coates, one of the senior leaders of that defense, number 41, pressuring. 
Coach is a man up front. He is the leader, Mr. Experience. He makes the calls, handles all the... He's the quarterback, basically, of the, of the Sooner defense. Second down and 10. Thomas again behind Gross's block, picks up only a couple. Out to about the 22. Let's check in with New York and John Saunders. All right, Steve, Tulsa and Houston. Chuck Clements just rockets this shot here. 27 yards to Keith Jack. And look at him jump into the end zone for the touchdown. Houston is trailing 38-24. Meanwhile, Texas Tech has just gone on top of Nebraska 21-20. Back to you. Man, Texas Tech leading Nebraska by one late in that game. Those Red Raiders are on that A&M schedule in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, Oklahoma did something very, very unusual for them the last few games here. They held on to the football quite a bit. Personal foul called against Oklahoma. Moves the ball out to about the 37. That last drive for Oklahoma, they held on to the football for 10 minutes total possession versus A&M's two minutes and 38 seconds. Now that is something that can help you beat this football team today, keep that running game off the field. That's true. Also, maybe wear down that fine A&M defense. Exactly. First down. Pollock with lots of time. Incomplete. He had a man open, Tony Harrison, but he just missed him. William Shankle, the corner on the right side, number eight, had the coverage. It almost looked like there was a mix-up in the routes the receivers were running. Harrison's going to come down, run on out, but he doesn't look real sure. He's, he's trying to... And then, then when he locates the ball, it looks like Pulick didn't know if he's going to come back to it or keep running. Just looks like a broken play to me. So it's second down and 10. Still at the A&M 37. Matthews in motion. Bullock over the middle, incomplete, knocked away at the last second by Brent DeQuazy, the linebacker. Let's get a report on the sideline on an injury from Dean Blevins. Guy Steve Solari, number 94, the fine linebacker for Texas A&M, has just gone into the locker room checking his eyesight, blurred vision. They expect him to return. We'll give you the update when they come back out. Thanks, Dean. He's played very well here in the early going, and, of course, he's one of the leaders on the A&M defense. That's right. You know, from an OU standpoint, the more of those veterans they can get out of the game and get down to their depth chart, the better off they're going to be. AM now with a third and 10, still at their own 37. Good protection for Pullig, who wants to go long, but he overthrows everybody. It was intended for Danny McCray, number two. And Pullig has only completed three of eight for 22 yards so far. AM will kick it away. Okay, well, you want to know why things are starting to look a little disoriented for Pulley. I told you last time he got hit was going to pay dividends, but watch this. He gets another hit. Aubrey Beavers with a shot. Now, that will put a little different thought in your mind as a quarterback when you go back next time. James Bennett punts with that wind, and he drives Darius Johnson way back, and Johnson lets it go in and out of the end zone. And it'll be first and 10 at the 20 on the touchback with just 48 seconds remaining in the quarter. Hey, it's just one day until Super Sunday and the premiere of one of those shows you've been waiting for. Yes, get out that cape and uh, tights there. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, prepares tomorrow night on ABC at 7 Central. Lois and Clark. That's a little different than Lewis and Clark. <laughs> they were explorers, weren't they? Uh, I'll let you handle that one. The Steve. new Superman series. That was a 63-yard punt by Bennett. That 15, 20-mile-an-hour wind certainly helping. Sooners first and 10 at their own 20. Take to Chandler to pull back. And James Allen in the flat, but Gundy threw it behind him. Oklahoma right now just trying to get a quick expansion offense. That's what they call when they get a running back out in the flat real hot before a linebacker can recover and get out there on him. Gundy's got to make better throws there, and they've got to catch some balls, too. They, they threw a couple out there that were catchable, and they just dropped them. Clock stops with 44 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
And as always, we'll keep you up to date all afternoon long on scores of games that have been completed and are in process. Of course, John Saunders in the studio with updates as well as the halftime report. Second and ten. Allen, big hole, breaking tackles. Mickens finally runs him down. A good block by 74 Milton over Overton this, to spring it. This is OU's bread and butter right here. Counter, they got a lot of mileage out of it last week. Look at the ISO blocks. Look at the drive block right there on the nose guard. Look at that hole. Allen comes with a good spin move right there and then goes on down the field for a real good game. Freshman James Allen, 39 yards on six carries so far, and first and ten Oklahoma at the a and 46. Misses the pitch, but falls on it back at the Oklahoma 49. See, that's going to drive Gibbs crazy. You can't come with a good play and then do something like that. They've got to be more consistent. They're doing a good job of possession. They're doing a good job of coming up with some big plays. They've got to be more mentally aware out there. The pitch by Gundy here looks like a good pitch. Allen, the freshman, he's just got to keep his eye on it, be aware of where he's at, and concentrate on the football. Well, as they say, hit him in a bad place, yeah. right in the hands. Right in the hands. Watson Brown next to head coach Gary Gibbs, and that is the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma controlling the football in the first quarter against favored Texas A&M and leading three to nothing. As many of you know, there are five Texas A&M University players that are not here for this game today. As late yesterday, the NCAA handed down sanctions and penalties for those players that had been accused of taking payment and had admitted doing so for work that they did not perform. Well, here's what the university had asked and recommended in their own investigation that these players be given as suspensions. On the right side, you see what the NCAA has given them, including Jesse Cox out for the season, all the way down to James Brooks, just two games. And of course, Greg Hill, perhaps the biggest name, a five game suspension. We'll have a statement from the president of the university shortly that he issued right after the ruling was given by the NCAA and Texas A&M not happy. Oklahoma on second down and Gundy sacked back around the 41. Busting through very quickly was Antonio Shorter. See, that's one of the horrors right now against facing A&M. They will bring anybody at any time. Short is going to come from your right side of the screen. He's on a full blitz, and Cavill can't slide out in time to pick him up. He beats him across. It's a sack, and that is his strong point. His feet, his quickness, and getting up field speed, sacking the quarterback, something the NFL will love to have. Well, it brings up now third down and 23. Both Albert Hall and Corey Warren are in the game at wideout for OU. Gundy flipping it out of the backfield and completing it. Dwayne Chandler, not quite enough for the first down, but a huge gain to about the 40 of AM. Oklahoma's going to play a wait and see game here. I think they're going to try to hold on to the football. They'll get a big play where they can get it, but they're not going to do anything that's going to really hurt them. That, that time, real good run, real good play selection. Just still wasn't enough. The 19 yard pass play. But it's fourth down, and Blanton is on to kick. Aaron Glenn, 31, drops back for AM. But remember, Blanton has that strong wind in his back. And he'd like to put one out inside the 10, as he did it in the first quarter. Not this time. In and out of the end zone. And AM will have it first and 10 of the 20 on the 40 yard kick. Well, the acting or interim president, brother, of Texas A&M University, Dr. E. Dean Gage, issued this statement in part immediately after the NCAA announced their ruling. He said, I am angered and disappointed about the action taken by the NCAA regarding several football student athletes. Throughout this whole process, we have demonstrated our total commitment and integrity to, com and to integrity and compliance. We underwent a rigorous, a vigorous rather, an immediate self-examination and recommended penalties that were respectful of the rules that were broken. 
they are not only disappointed and angered, they are very upset and have said that they are exploring what other avenues, including appeal, may be available to them. We asked the doctor to come on and speak with us, but he declined, saying that his statement would stand, and that's all they were going to say at the moment. Rodney Thomas trying to get outside. He does and has a first down before he's bumped out of bounds by John Anderson, the strong safety. Boy, Mike Coates almost came around in the inside and made a great football play. He knifed through the inside. He saw it. He read it. He just couldn't get there in time. Got a little foot on Rodney Thomas, but I don't think grabbing a foot on, on, on Thomas is going to be enough to hold him down. you got to get a larger portion of that anatomy. A gain of 13 and a first down for A&M as they move it out to the 33. Oklahoma leading 3 to nothing. Rodney Thomas now five carries for 22 yards. Play action. Pollock looking long and over the middle. Darius Johnson with the interception. Well, perhaps Pollock starting to get a little bit rattled back there. It's hard to say. Didn't look like Ryan Matthews knew exactly where that ball was headed or what kind of route he was running. From the end zone, see they're in three deep coverage. We won't be able to see the free safety of the corner just yet. The wide right receiver's running a post pattern. Just supposed to be caught right over the middle of the field. But the person that catches the football is Darius Johnson. Right here, Darius Johnson, he's in three deep. He's just closing him into the free safety. That ball's so poorly thrown, he goes and gets it himself. Plus, Ryan Matthews took his eye off the ball at exactly the wrong time. He was looking for Johnson. First and 10, Oklahoma. Gundy. Completing it over the middle to Allen. And Allen fights forward out to about the 34. Larry Jackson on the stop. That was what happened in the first quarter. And you can see how Oklahoma controlled the football. They lead it three to nothing. That's a matter of possession. There it is. Keep the other people off the field when you know you've got a problem with it. That's the simplest way to, to, to handle it. Oklahoma running double the plays of AM in the first quarter. And about three times the yardage. Second down, six. Thomas, or Allen. James Allen picking his way for a first down. A little help from tight end Ricky Brady with a block. There's Darius Johnson who picked off the second a and turnover. Brady with a real good block, just a nice so Getting some lanes, getting some creases. Guy like Allen, that's all you need. He doesn't need a whole lot. James Allen off to a fine start as a freshman. 6'1, 205. And they are excited about his future. Dwayne Chamber in a fullback. Dundee on first down. Going back, completing it to Brady. Brady hauled down inside the 40 by Junior White, the free safety. It's another OU first down. Looked like they went man to man all the way across the board. A dangerous throw by Gundy, but they get it there, and I guess that's all that matters because Junior White, you're going to see Junior White, the free safety, come down and Brady here. And if that ball is thrown just a little bit farther inside, he's going to take it and go for six, but it's not. Good throw. Good run by Brady. A gain of 22. And timeout has been called on the field. A&M asking for timeout with 11.52 to go in the first half. The Sooners leading R.C. Slocum's bunch by three. Monday Night Football. Oklahoma with a first and ten. They are inside the AM 42. Cale Gundy has completed six of 11 passes for 82 yards so far. Blitz is on. Gundy trying to beat it. He does. Corey Warren with a first down, driven out of bounds by Aaron Glenn. Let's get an update from John Saunders. Steve, USC and Penn State. John Sacker rolls to his right. Spots Mike Archie wide open into the end zone. Four yards, they lead over USC 7-0. Meanwhile, Nebraska's Byron Bennett has just kicked his third field goal of the day. This one from 29 yards, and they lead by two. Steve. Thank you, John. Boy, that, that 
Texas Tech Nebraska game. They're having a heck of an afternoon. So are the Sooners right now moving with another first down in AM territory. The delay. Chandler running hard and inside the 15. Very close to another Oklahoma first down. Perfect mix right now for Oklahoma. Run, pass, run, pass. Like we said, Watson Brown, I think he's got him completely mixed up. Tackle him in the nose guard. What did we say about a 34? He's got to stay stout. He's got to stay inside. He gets his shoulders turned right there. Langston doing a good job on him. That's all they need to get the yards up front. There's just too many holes in a 34 defense to have your nose guard get turned any one way. Dwayne Chandler, a 210-pound sophomore out of Aberdeen, Mississippi, with 11 yards and movement along the line. Roderick Roberson jumping early. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yards, repeat first down. And you know too, Steve, the onus just doesn't come on Tackleman as a nose guard in a 34. 43 Atkinson and 37 Jackson, who's starting for the first time this game right here, they have got to get up in there and do something too. They can't sit back there and get ISO, get fooled, and be going the wrong direction. They got to get up when they see that run and plug those holes. That's the second penalty against the Sooners for a total of 20 yards. On the option, Gundy, James Allen, hauled down at the 20. Good play by Junior White. He was not going to let Allen get outside. Looked like White was coming up there on the blitz. He was in the backfield awful fast. He tried a little reverse turnaround play. You can see White right now. He's on the run. He reads it. And he's upfield like a free safety should be. He's right there in the lane. You don't have those lanes, it's tough. Good play. He doesn't even have to go to the ground. He made it look so easy. The loss is back to the 20. Where it is second down and 18. Now the Sooners bring in the extra wide receiver. Albert Hall joins Corey Warren. But the pitch is to Allen. Diving over the left side and down to about the 17. Tripped up by Reggie Graham, number 38. James Allen, the ball carrier. Sooners just keep eating that clock away. I was just getting ready to say that they are still holding on to the football. All we've seen with the football all day long so far is Oklahoma. Clock running with under 10 minutes remaining in the half. Oklahoma leading Texas A&M, 3 to nothing. Gundy getting it from Watson Brown and Gary Gibbs on the sideline. Third down, about 15 to go. And he flips it out and dropped by Chandler. Now they're going to fall on the ball, and rightly so, to make sure that it's not a fumble. Had it been ruled a lateral pass, it would have been available. But it's ruled a forward pass incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Would have been a tough, uh, tough first down to get either way, but once again, mental errors, I call them, holding on to the football. It's something technical that they work on every day. It's just a matter of concentration. Gundy put it right there, and they've, uh, they've got to give themselves a little bit better chance in that. Scott Blanton will come on for another field goal attempt. He's made 15 in a row now after his first quarter shot. This one will be a 34-yarder. Alfred the holder. It's blocked. It won't make it because it looked like Aaron Glenn, yep, number 31, got in there and got a hand on it. That's something AM has done a good job on their special teams of both punt and placement, pressure and blocking. And Aaron Glenn in there to get this one. Last year he blocked a couple. He's coming from the outside. The wingman doesn't come out enough, get anything on him. He gets airborne, lays out, and gets the ball. Big, big time play. Here you're going to see Ron Hall, the wingman on the right side. He doesn't push out to get anything on Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn's got a free run. You give a guy like that who runs a 4-4 a free run, he's going to get it every time. Mm. In there quickly. I used to get do that maybe a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you could still do that if you didn't have an injured foot. <laughs> Remember I said I used to. <laughs> maybe. A&M, first.
First and ten from their own 20. The black field goal remains in. Oklahoma three, Texas A&M nothing. Rodney Thomas finding a hole, but hanging on for dear life is Mike Coates. Let's get a report on the sideline again from Dean Blevins. Guys, Oklahoma defensively has played real well. Outside linebacker Aubrey Beavers, you see here, the Oklahoma Sports Information Department has uh, put out a postcard promoting the Beave, the guy they say is 6'2", 232. Reminds me of the guys in the booth. 4% body fat, guys. Back to you, Steve. <laughs> it reminds you of one of the guys in the booth, and it's not me. First carry for the fullback, Cliff Gross. But not much happening, and again, it's Coates on the stop. Coates knifing in, making a good play there. They say Coates benches, inclined benches, close to 700 pounds. Now, I'm not refuting the, the, the attributes of the OU strength program, but wow. <laughs> well, he looks like he might He looks do like it. he might. Oklahoma has controlled the football up until this point. Over 16 minutes of the 20 minutes that have been played. And I'm trying to get something going, and there may have been a dropped exchange of center. First down. And I'm retaining possession. Corey Pullock on the bottom of that pile when you're 200 pounds and you got those 300 pounders on top of you. All you want to do is get out. It's amazing there was any ball movement at all. Sure didn't look like any from this angle. <laughs> Right at the line of scrimmage, you see Colorado all over Baylor in the third. Gross and Thomas in the backfield in the eye formation with Matthews in motion. Thomas, nowhere to go again. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Joe Correa and Mike Coates combining on the stop. Well, this is game two of a triple header, so later tonight you'll be able to see in prime time the defending Pac-10 champion, the Washington Huskies, going back east to the Big Ten to take on number 16 rated Ohio State. 7 o'clock tonight, central time, right here on ABC Sports. Game three of the college football triple header this Saturday. Second down, 10. And I'm still at the 30. Just does get it away, and it's incomplete. Intended for Cliff Gross, the fullback. Perfectly timed as the play in the secondary. Well, first of all, I think John McGee might have tipped the ball, but Mario Freeman was right there at the same time that the ball got to Gross. Freeman filling in now for Tremaine Green. Does a good job of buzzing out to the flat to get on this guy. Ball wasn't going to be caught anyway, but he's right there. John McGee, linebacker blitzing, getting a hand on it, and Freeman with excellent coverage. So it is third and ten for Corey Pullig and the Aggies. Lots of time underneath to Thomas. But only about a gain of three as the Sooners are waiting for him. And again, it's Mario Freeman along with free safety Larry Bush. And then better be careful now. They don't want to let the Sooners get too much momentum down here. You see this crowd starting to come alive, and that's one thing R.C. said he wanted to do is keep the Oklahoma fans out of the football game. James Bennett the punt. Darius Johnson back in his block. Oklahoma blocks and takes over inside the A&M 25. Jawan Penny. receiver but he's playing on most all the special teams this goes to show you how much everybody's got to do on this team he came right through the middle there or through the outside made a good play they got 10 men up it's a perfect time to try to block a kick when they're backed up he comes from the inside along with somebody else we can't see the number I think Just it might have been freshman Anthony Foggle looked like Foggle Gundy throwing on first down and he completes it to PJ Mills Aaron Glenn on the stop, but it's another Oklahoma first down. That's another thing Oklahoma's done well, too, is that after a big turnover, they go right to the air. Last week, after a fumble recovery, they went right to Corey Warren for a big play down the sidelines. 
They had three wideouts in the game on first down. Mills comes out. Terry Collier back in at fullback. First down right at the 10. Collier bangs down for a few. Antonio Shorter, 56, leading the tackle. And Gundy off to a good start. Not bad, but you know, he that's actually better than it looks because we've had three or four drops. I'd say. I think you're right. We have five minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Oklahoma leading it three to nothing. They now face a second down and goal from the eight. to the left side. Warren's going to come down the field and just do a stop route, hook up right in front of the goal line. Gundy throws a bullet. It is right on. Hard play for the corner to stop. He's got no help inside. He was inside where he's supposed to be. But Gundy, like we said, he's got that quick release, and he threw it there. Latin on for the extra point. It is good. Corey Warren has caught three balls for 30 yards, and that touchdown from eight yards out that gives the Sooners a 10 to nothing lead with five and a half minutes remaining. Andre Williams on the play here. He's got nothing else he can do. He's playing off and inside about five yards. Warren's got great speed. He stops, makes the play, touchdown. Andre Williams, he's a freshman right here. Only thing he's got to know, he's got man to man. That's good, but he's got to get more inside and get closer up to the receiver. He's that close to the goal line. Don't give him up that, that much room. Latin will kick it off. Oklahoma now leading at 10 to nothing. And with that wind at his back, it lands beyond the end line. First and 10, A&M at the 20. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And AM needs a drive right here, Ron. AM's got to put it together somehow. I don't know what the point is. This is unbelievable. You would think that if you took the teams away on the left side, you tell me, based on the past, who would be AM and who'd be Oklahoma. Well, I think, unbelievable. We're, I think Watson Brown may be the story of the first half with this new look offense. It is working. Like you said, Ron, I don't know what I'm going to come out in. <laughs> I know AM doesn't either. New backfield with. Detron Smith, 44 at fullback, and Leland McElroy, 34, who has the ball at tailback. But nowhere to run. Boy, the Sooner defense has just been terrific against the run, especially when AM has tried to go outside. John Anderson, the strong safety, up to support. Well, there's nothing, no secret about John Anderson. He's going to hit you. He's a walk on. Earned everything he's got here. A tough kid. He, they say he plays hit first and pass second. <laughs> and that, uh, that right there proves it. A gain of just about a half a yard, getting one, second down and nine. And m now with both Harrison and Matthews in at wide receivers. But the ball to McElroy hammered at the line of scrimmage. Mike Coates stood him up and got a little help from David Campbell. Well, I don't know. Maybe Mike Coates does incline 705 pounds because right here, you're going to see him get a real quick read. Look at that hole. He's up there right now. He doesn't give the guard or tackle a chance to, to, to blindside him. He comes up and makes a hit. Dexter Wesley, 75, trying to hit him. Missed him. Boy, that, that, that brings back shades of uh, <laughs> Selman and, and Bosworth and things like that. Great Oklahoma linebackers of the past. Well, Mike Coates is right up there with him. Now Rodney Thomas and Leland McElroy are together in the a and backfield and pulling one's timeout on third and ten. 
Four minutes and two seconds remaining. AM with one timeout remaining here in the first half. Trailing Oklahoma 10 to nothing. Check out this lineup of regional college football action here on ABC Sports next Saturday. Four of the top 10 teams in the country, five in the top 20 will be in action. So check the listings in your area for the game and time. Also check and see what games might be available for you on, on pay-per-view by calling your local cable operator as well. That's next Saturday's lineup here on ABC Sports. You know, I noticed, Steve, that defensively now, coordinator Tom Hayes, he moved Coates and uh, Freeman around. They were both on opposite sides. They got them switched now, and I think it balances out their, uh, their play as far as linebackers from, a, from a, a weight perspective. They also run fairly well. There's third down and 10 for AM. Bullock going away from the pressure. Complete. Back on the inside to Kevin Byrne. Freshman redshirt wide receiver out of the Woodlands, Texas, north of Houston. And it's very close to the first down. He needed to get across the 30. Larry Bush, the free safety, made the stop on Byrne. But he has just enough for a first down for AM. And man, did they need it. Oh, you notice that time now. Pullick ro he rolled out to his uh, right side. Getting him a little more mobility back there, letting him see more things perhaps because those guys are coming up front and they're getting to him. Department official for a Clock running with 340 remaining in the half. Pullig now has completed 5 of 12 for 34 yards, but he has thrown two interceptions. First and 10. Play action. And whistles blowing and stopping play. And now Tempers uh -oh. Flair is Oklahoma's defense banged in, including David Campbell, who weighs 280 pounds, <laughs> into Pollock. And, of course, some of Pollock's teammates took exception. There's Big David. I think Pollock. They took too much time, so they're going to move it back five yards to the 25, where it'll be first and 15. I'll tell you what, when you get 75,000 screaming fans and the referees are trying to blow the whistle and stop play, not everybody, especially with helmets on, is going to hear it. Uh, and I don't think a lot of guys want to hear it, if you know what I mean right now. No. Oklahoma. <laughs> Tell you what, they are coming. Another play action. Pulling, flipping it out and throwing it behind the intended receiver, who was Cliff Gross, the fullback. And John Anderson almost came up with the interception. It'll be second down and 15 as Gross goes out. Well, Pullock didn't see it, but Short came across the field wide open in a three deep. Apparently, one of the linebackers didn't get into his hook zone, and all he had to do was see him. Now, Detron Smith replaces Gross at fullback, and Leland McElroy, number 34, in a tailback. Twin wide receivers to the left on second down and 15. with a little screen underneath and he completes it to Tony Harrison and Harrison up across the 35 well short of the first down Larry Bush number 31 on the tackle Harrison a guy they don't throw to too much you know because there's so much of a run team right now but when they do decide to throw it they're going to throw to him and they're going to go to short it is third down and five just about two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Oklahoma leading Texas A&M 10 to nothing. Good protection batted down and almost picked off. Mario Freeman starting and having a fine game. The reference I made earlier to Freeman, he's a little light, about 214 in there, even though he doesn't look at that picture. But I tell you what, he's got great athletic skills, great jumping ability. Look at this, right now, he just turns and gets his vision on the quarterback, jumps up, and bats the ball down. That's called playing football right there. Just being a football player. Or as we like to say in the South, football. Football. Got that team. James Bennett to punt into the wind. There he is.
Miles Johnson drops it. Oklahoma recovers at the 11. A&M with a 51-yard punt into the wind. Oklahoma backed up, but Gundy going long, overthrows everybody. And the closest guy to the ball was free safety junior White of A&M. It's a good job of playing cover two defense right there. Gundy really had nothing. I think if you're just going to throw it, do it like that. Throw it and get it out of here. Don't let anybody uh, get the football. Well, what a punt by Bennett into the teeth of that wind. He hit it 51 yards. And Oklahoma Darius Johnson dropping it, but the Sooners falling on it. So it's second and 10. OU at their own 11. Just over two minutes remaining in the first half. Oklahoma has two timeouts remaining. Collier on the draw. Collier with the first down out to about the 28. Stopped by Reggie Brown. Let's get a report again from Dean Blevins. Guys, the Aggies defensively have three good players with injuries. Linebacker Steve Solari just told me that he will, he took a shot in the head. He plans to play in the second half. Cornerback Ray Mickens has a concussion. He took his helmet off. They will, yeah, he told me he's unsure if he will play. And Eric England, the great defensive lineman, has a racing heartbeat. They are monitoring that carefully. Oklahoma, no injuries at this point. Thanks a lot, Dean. That is big trouble for A&M with those guys if they remain out. I think there are a lot of racing heartbeats out there. Collier banging ahead. He gained 17 on the previous run. Here he picks up seven or eight out across the 35. Clock running with a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Okay, this right now, I would say the Sooners are going to keep this ball on the ground, eat up as much of the clock as possible. If worst, at worst, get a field goal and use up all minute 20 and running right now. Collier, the setback behind Gundy. Second down, about three. Option. Gundy cuts it out. First down. Out to the 47. Mike Hendricks. The strong safety makes the stop for AM. If you notice, Steve, in the backfield, they're taking one of the backs and they're bringing him around like a fake belly play, and then he stops and goes in a misdirection toward the other side. I think what they want to do is try to get Solari or Atkinson, one of those linebackers, to just move two steps in the opposite direction right here. See right there, Allen's on his way back. Now he stops, goes the other way. If they can get one of the inside linebackers out of position, two steps, that's just enough to get some seams inside. Well, it worked that time. Gundy to throw. Incomplete over the middle intended for Corey Warren. He was defended by Andre Williams, number 26, and it stops the clock with 49 seconds remaining in the half. Now, Bob Davy, the defensive coordinator for AM, he's got to know that he's got a rookie corner in there right now, Andre Williams. He's a freshman, 5'9", 171. I'm not saying he's not an excellent football player, but anytime you get a rookie in there, you can bet that ball's going to be going toward his direction sooner or later in this football game. They always seem to know where the oh, youth yeah. is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, you, Davey might want to put A&M now in a, in a little different look as far as their coverages, maybe a little bit more zone. High formation with Collier and Allen, and Allen on the pitch in the reverse to Albert Hall. Albert Hall looking to throw a pass. Incomplete. It was intended for Juwan Penny, but Albert Hall had pressure and almost fell down. Aaron Glenn had the coverage on Juwan Penny, and he almost came up with the ball. This play has everything. Well, here we go. Once again, I know people are tired of hearing us say it, but Watson Brown, Z reverse. He stops. He trips right there, and then still gets the ball off. Amazing. Juwan Penny was underthrown. Aaron Glenn, the corner right there on him. It's going to bring up a third and 10. 42 seconds remaining in the half, and the ball still at the Oklahoma 47. Sooners leading 10 to nothing. Play action to Allen. Gundy has to run. First down, out of bounds. At about the 40 or 36, rather, of AM. Reggie Graham finally dragged him out of bounds. A 17 yard run, and a reminder that coming up at halftime, Prudential's halftime report with John Saunders, who will have scores, highlights, and all kinds of good stuff on everything that's happening in college football this afternoon. Also, we'll have a recap of the top three teams in the nation Florida State, Alabama, and Michigan. 
ball in action and I'm at that Michigan Notre Dame game. Well, that's another place I should have gone to school, Michigan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like when, uh, when Barry Switzer came in here a few a few minutes ago, uh, I was telling him, yeah, you should have came down here. I said, well, sorry, Coach, I didn't. I got two Rose Bowl rings out of it, but. That's right. <laughs> you can't complain. Oh, uh, no, I can't. Timeout called on the field, stopping the clock with 34 seconds. Oklahoma taking the timeout. Well, the officials took time out trying to get everybody off the field. That's what it was. The Sooner bench had come out on the field. And the officials wanted to clear it. So back to play. Gundy back to pass. And he completes it. Corey Warren thrown out of bounds at the 25. It's another first down. Donovan Greer, a freshman, on the coverage, number 30. Well, now we see two freshmen in there. That was just a three-deep coverage, nothing fancy. Just working the outside underneath. Low percentage throw as far as getting it intercepted. Gain of 11. The ball right at the 25 with 28 seconds remaining in the half. First and 10, Oklahoma. Play action. Then the under pressure and he's hauled down. Dragged down first by Edward Jasper and then Lance Tackleman, 58, finished him off. Yeah, those are the three up front that uh, Brown talked about containing. He was worried about these three guys. If he could keep them neutralized, which he's done thus far, they would have success. But that time, they pinned the ears back and went after him and got him. Sooners call timeout. They have one more remaining this half. That stops the clock with 22 seconds left. And again, we remind you, we have a triple header of college football for you today. So this evening, an ABC College Football primetime special, the big showdown between two top 20 teams, defending Pac-10 champion and number 12th rated Washington is in Columbus to take on 16th ranked Ohio State. 7 o'clock Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain tonight, right here on ABC. Gundy has been sacked three times for losses of totaling 20 yards. But it hasn't exactly slowed down the OU offense. They've been able to come up with some big plays, Ron, and overcome third and long situations against a pretty good defense. Seems like the sacks have come, fortunately, for OU early in, in the down series where they have a couple more downs to get it all back. And when they've made plays, they've made big plays. And the thing that's impressed me the most thus far is that they've held on to the football. Let's go down and get another report from Dean on the sidelines. Guys, the, Oklahoma, the uh, Texas A&M defensive coaches are telling their players that every time Oklahoma flexes, it's tied in, that they always run a screen. We'll keep an eye on that. Right now, Brady is coming out flexed. Brady, number 86, the tight end is flexed. He is second down and 15. Gundy, a little flare pass to call you the fullback. Busted out of bounds. This time a short gain of three or four as Mike Hendricks, the strong safety, was over quickly. The clock stops with 16 seconds remaining, and there is a penalty flag down. Third down seven. Offside. Defense. And him offside, so the option will rest with the Sooners. They may want to run one more play here, a running play, and try to stop the clock real quick. I don't know if they want to risk throwing it, even though they've had some success. Well, the hash marks have been moved in this year. That's one of the rule changes, which should make field goals a little easier. Additionally, the win will be at Blanton's back. Right. Although he had one blocked earlier in the game, prior to that, he's made 15 field goals in a row without a miss. So they're in pretty good position if they can get a gain and get a few more yards, they'll have enough time to go for the field goal. Well, I doubt if Gibbs is unhappy at all going at halftime at at least 13 nothing. Okay, that's why I say that. I think he's going to just be conservative somewhat and try to get a field goal. Third down and seven here. Gundy pumps, goes long. Corey Warren in the end zone, out of the end zone, incomplete. Warren made the catch, but he did not come down inbounds. 
Donovan Greer, the freshman, picked on again as he's running all the way with Warren. So it's fourth and seven. Just an amazing catch by Warren. Inside man-to-man -man technique, the corner stops his feet right there just for one st second, but he recovers well, and he's actually in good position. But you want to talk about a great athlete. Warren gets up, oh, makes the catch man. over the defensive back's shoulders. He's not the fastest wide receiver, but he is terrific. A 39-yard field goal attempt by Scott Blanton. And it is good. With just four seconds remaining in the half, Oklahoma 13, Texas A&M nothing. And the Sooner Schooner rides again. Now, you come back here in the second half, I think you're going to see Oklahoma running that football an awful lot. Aggie's got the problem right now. Let's face That's it. That's true. They have got the problem down here. Yeah, we're done. Let's see how close Corey Warren was. Tough throw to catch coming over your shoulder right there. But look at this. His foot lands right there. Oh, that's close. That's so close. And he just made, and the fact is he made a great catch on the ball. Look at the DB. He's all over him. Oklahoma just went on a 12-play drive to get that field goal. They moved it down the field in two minutes and nine seconds, eating up just about all of what was left. So they couldn't have done it any better. And I think it's kind of a reversal from what most people thought, Ron. It was A&M's defense and A&M's controlling the football that people were anticipating. The Sooners' defense has played remarkably well, and A&M is or, or uh, OU has moved the ball better against A&M's defense than I think most Absolutely. people thought. Absolutely. Typhel McMullen and Leland McElroy back looking for the kick, but it's into the A&M band as the wind continues to blow right to left at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. So still four seconds remaining on the clock, and A&M will have a play, and they have given up 260 yards in the first half while managing only 77. You know, it's been said before, and I'll say it again, perhaps all this stuff with the rulings and the, and, the, and the waiting for all that and the anticipation, maybe it's affected the Aggies a little bit more than people think. Now whistles blow on the snap as Corey Pullick comes back in the, in, in the end of the first half, finds Oklahoma with a 13-point lead over A&M. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. Steve Zabriskie along with Ron Pitts as we go to the second half with Oklahoma leading Texas A&M in a surprising one, 13 to nothing. And Oklahoma's defense, while coming into the game, A&M's wrecking crew defense was really the big story, Ron. Oklahoma's defense is kind of the story of the first half, including a blocked punt. Well, you're going to see right here they got 10 men up. The upbacks can't handle it. John, John Anderson loops around the inside, which is perfect. This is just how it's designed. He blocks it. And that's the kind of thing right there that's going to make the difference in this football game. We asked Gibbs, hey, can you do something special teams-wise to make it happen for you? And he said, yeah, we can. Offensively, the Sooners have moved the ball tremendously well, much better than anybody thought. Here's an almost touchdown. Right here. Now, this is the touchdown. The cornerback there, just a freshman, like I said, that close to the goal line. He's got to play him a little bit tighter. Corey Warren, excellent receiver, touchdown, no problem. <laughs> and this, this is the one here that was almost. Another great catch by Warren. And you can't ask Cale Gunning to throw that ball any better than that. He's going to the corner. If he throws it any farther inside, it's going to be intercepted. Look how close it is. About six inches from being a touchdown, Corey Warren with some big catches in the first half. And the Sooners with a couple of Scott Blanton field goals to go with that touchdown pass, leading it 13 to nothing. And now, last week, Ron, Texas A&M sluggish in the first half, came on in the second half after R.C. Slocum apparently got them fired up in the locker room. What do you foresee here? 
Well, I, I hope he said the same things this week as he did last week. I don't know, but uh, I tell you, A&M is definitely a second-half football team. They've been known to get more yardage, more pass, and just be overall more productive in the second half. And right now, they're going to have to do it. The one thing that sticks in my mind is that, that uh, extra point up there, right there, making it 13-0, that may be a very big extra point difference. Let's check out some scores of other games that we did not have a chance to bring you during the Prudential Halftime Report. And a lot of games, of course, are completed, especially in the eastern part of the country. Look at this one, 8-5, to five, Colorado State at Air Force. Like a baseball score. A big triple header today here on ABC, of course, tonight. Washington and Ohio State. Coming your way at 7 Central and 6 Mountain Time to kind of cap off this big day of college football. Let's go down the sideline before the second half kickoff. Get another report from Dean Blevins. Guys, I've just returned from both of the locker rooms. In the Oklahoma locker room, the theme was no more USC. Don't let the emotional letdown come. Oklahoma blew a lead last year. It was a critical loss for the Sooners. Gundy says we're ramming it down their throats. His shoulder's injured. Albert Hall won't return. He has a sprained left lead ligament. ligament. A&M coaches are saying too many mistakes, and they're playing their defense on the field too much. Ron, as you know, you can't win if your defense is on the field all day. <laughs> That's right. And those boys are getting real tired down there. And, hey, like you said in the beginning of the game, it was getting high. It's always what, 10 degrees hotter down on the turf. And uh, just got to take that water in, I guess. <laughs> Typhle McMullen and Leland McElroy back to receive as Blanton will kick it off. And if it's anything like the kickoffs in the first half, Gundy looking on from the sideline. It'll be non returnable, and it is. Well, the halftime statistics really are even more impressive than the 13 to nothing score. You know, the thing that, first of all, of course, jumps out is the total yards there. But you look at the rushing yards. a and supposed to come into this game rushing the football. They've got 32 total yards rushing. I know that Rodney Thomas is better than that. And the time of possession almost double. Oklahoma almost 20 minutes of the 30 minutes in the first half. A&M needs a drive. In the first half, Corey Pollock, 6 of 15 for only 44 yards passing and two interceptions. On first and 10, Rodney Thomas trying to get outside. He cannot. Brent DeQuazy calls him down. DeQuazy more of a quicker, agile outside linebacker. They're pretty high on him. Does a good job of using his speed to get into the backfield. You're going to see him at the top here. He just beats the tight end block inside and then beats the fullback inside again and makes the play. DeQuazy, a 210-pound sophomore, by major college standards, maybe a little light to be playing. A little bit light out there, but hey, when you're doing that kind of stuff, I don't think anybody's going to complain. It is second down, 12 after a loss of two. Thomas again. Not much of a hole, and Coates is right there to wrestle him to the ground right at the original line of scrimmage. Maybe he gained a yard out to the 21. Defensive coordinator Tom Hayes, what he's doing right now with his guys up front, he's saying, everybody, you got to play one-on-one -on -one football. You got to handle the man in front of you. Don't get moved and stick, get off your blocks and run to the football. That's one thing he did so well as my coach at UCLA. And, uh, you know, it's showing right here. Now, A&M in another third and long situation, third and nine. They are two of seven on third down conversion. Billing has time, flips it underneath and completes it to Thomas, but he goes nowhere. Tyrell Peter. A freshman from right here in Norman with a big tackle on Thomas. A&M will have to give it away on their first possession. James Bennett on the punt. Darius Johnson back to receive. Bennett did a real good job punting into the wind in the first half. He gets a good roll here. Johnson has it from the 31 up to about the 36, and that's it. Daryl Red, the snapper, the first one down there, along with Reggie Graham, a 45-yard punt. CFA College Football here on ABC Sports is being brought to you today by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. 
Owen Field and Memorial Stadium here in Norman, Oklahoma. And the sea of red, pretty happy so far with the Sooners leading at 13 to nothing. Uh, hey, they got the ball right now. It's all about using more of that clock, I believe. Wayne Chandler in at fullback. James Allen at tailback. Oklahoma first and 10. Allen. AM right there as he gains maybe only a yard. Sam Adams, number 95, leading the play. Oklahoma did a pretty good job in the first half. Only two punts. Of course, they had the turnover with the fumble and the block field goal. You know, of course, turnovers is a key factor. That's one that that's very good. If they can <laughs> have a second half like this, it's going to make it very tough on the Andes. Jawan Penny, 89, in at wide receiver, along with Corey Warren. Got me lots of time in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Ricky Brady, the tight end. Larry Jackson had the coverage, and Dean Blevins has something for us. Guys, defensively, the Aggies are missing two outstanding performers. We mentioned in the first half, Ray Mickens had an injury, and he is out with a concussion, will not play. Linebacker Solari will not play as well, so two key players will not play in the second half. Boy, those are two key guys, that's for sure. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, that's going to loom real big now for the Aggies. Like I said, I is Bob Dave going to have to do some things now defensively a little bit different to make up for some of the lack of experience he has back there? Well, the AM defense has Oklahoma right now, third and long. Gundy. Corey Warren tipped away at the last second by Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn having a fine game makes a big play here, and the Sooners will have to give it up. Last year's Southwest Conference, a newcomer of the year. Perfect technique. He's over his feet. He drives. This is the difference right here. Look at the drive he gets. Now he's going to bat the football. Dangerous, but if you got the speed and the closing ability to get to the football, make the play. Pro scouts love this. And Aaron Glenn is back to receive the punt. Glanton on to kick with the wind at his back. High, relatively short kick, and takes a great OU bounce. Aaron Glenn could do nothing about it as it was well away from him. It goes out at the 14 of AM. What a job in the kicking game by Scott Blanton. A 48 yard punt. We'll be back. Just under 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading Texas AM 13 to nothing, and the Aggies. Again, will not enjoy good field position as this time after starting from the 20, their first possession of the half, they start from their own 14. Gross and Thomas in the backfield, and it's Thomas. Rodney running hard, but Aubrey Beavers is there along with Mario Freeman. And what a game 44 Mario Freeman is having. Not expected to start earlier in the week. And you know, a lot of speculation about his size and his ability to, to run to the football and all that kind of stuff. But you're going to see him here. He's on his keys. He sees that guard coming out to get him. He gets upfield. He gets outside leverage, takes on the block inside, and he gets there fast enough and doesn't hold up traffic that, is, that his pursuit can get there and help him out as well. Good play. Beaver's also in on it. Aubrey Beaver's hard to move on the outside. A senior out of Houston. Second down eight. Play action, pulling, firing it, low and incomplete. Intended for Tony Harrison. Coverage by Darius Johnson. Fuller's got to make that play right there. As an, an out, plenty of time. You're going to see how open he is here. It's a three deep drop. Darius giving him some room. In fact, getting turned around, and the ball's not there. It's third down and seven. Bullock has not had a good day throwing the football. And because of the control of the ball by Oklahoma, AM's been forced to throw more than they would have liked. Yeah, and they got to him early, too. He gets it away. Intercepted. Mario Freeman at the 12. Russell Allen, number 95, was in the face of Corey Pullock. And Mario Freeman comes up with yet another big play. There's nothing like pressure. He's trying to get to Harrison across the field. It's a zone coverage. 
Freeman just going to his drop. The receiver falls down. There it is right there. Freeman in perfect position. Now he's off to the races. It's all about the pressure on the quarterback. When you can get the pressure on this man right here, make him dance around. That time it wasn't his fault, though, because he was thrown in the right position. But the receiver goes down. Oklahoma makes a great play. Now the Sooners have another opportunity. Allen trying to get outside. He cannot. Good pursuit by Antonio Shorten. Junior linebacker out of Houston who's also had a pretty good day. And Allen gets it down inside the 10, inside the 9. That is the third AM turnover. Two interceptions. 11 minutes exactly remaining in the third quarter. Allen gained three, so it'll be second and seven. Yesterday in the meeting, Gibbs talked a lot about turnovers. He said they had had too many in the past, and they need to go out here, especially this game, and limit those turnovers, hold on to the football, keep AM's offense off the field. Gundy running out of time. Pressure all over him, led by Eric England, number 92. The first guy in there. Gundy couldn't find anybody open, even though he rolled away from the initial pressure. Excellent coverage here. You might want to call this a coverage sack, triple formation. They're just back in a, in, in a three deep zone. Gundy's got no place to throw. And now here comes the heat. Sometimes it's smart to take that sack. That's a good experienced move by Gundy. Don't throw it away. Don't throw the interception. That's the fourth sack by the AM defense. Gundy has lost a total of 27 yards on those four sacks. Now the ball is at the 15 where it is third down and 14 yards to go. And somebody jumped with a drawn into Sam Adams who blasted in there. But whether he was premature or whether he was drawn off sides, we will find out from John Lurie, the referee. Dead ball, encroachment defense, five yard penalty. Apparently Sam did it all on his own. Uh, you know, that's a that's another mental error they call it. All he's got to do is watch the football, but when you get on a certain count all the time, and that's a credit to Gundy. Bury that snap count. Draw those guys off sides. That moves the ball down to the 10, where it's third and nine. Throws it back over the middle. What a catch by Allen. Touchdown. Well, now they've really made things tough on the Aggies. Just a triple formation there. You're going to see Allen come underneath, sneak underneath the coverage. Basically, they had a man-to-man -man zone combination. He comes underneath everybody. Looked like they got somebody picked. Looked like it was a mix-up in the secondary. And what an outstanding catch. What a day for James Allen, the freshman from Winniewood, Oklahoma. Keith Mitchell was right in the face of Gundy, but Gundy got it away. Scott Blanton adds the extra point. And the Sooners surprising AM, welcoming them to Norman with a 20 to nothing lead in the third. The Sooners are fired up and so are about 75,000 fans here in Norman as they now lead AM 20 to nothing. Blanton will kick off. Tyler McMullen and Leland McElroy who are back haven't had much to do as Blanton hasn't given them any to return. This one will be caught, but about nine yards deep by McElroy. Yet another touchback. We want to remind you that at the conclusion of today's game, we will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school in the name of those respective players. And now, Steve, here's the problem. The Oklahoma crowd is starting to get into this football game. That's one thing RC didn't want. And they have got to get out of the play action mode here, maybe get a third receiver on the field and start moving, moving this thing up the field. AM starting from their own 20. Rodney Thomas 
has a hole and picks up five or six on first down. Russell Allen, 95 on the stop. And that's one of the best first down gains they've had. Yeah, but the only problem is it's a run. You, know, you got 926 and ticking. And I'm not saying they can't run the ball up and down the field like this and score a lot of points fast, but pretty soon they're going to have to get into some kind of throwing. But, and, I, and, I, and I give them credit. You know, they're, they're doing a good job of not panicking. RC is not a panic type of guy. He's going to stay on his game plan. But they're going to have to open it up sooner or later. Well, they've been trying play action passes. And because they've been unable to run the ball effectively, that's really not going to fool anybody. But they're still going. With the, only the two wide out set. On the delay. A first down out to about the 32. Rodney Thomas picks up about seven. Ariel Freeman on the stop. See, I know what Tom Hayes is going to do right now. He's just going to sit back and play percentage defense on the Oklahoma side. He's going to make them earn everything. He's not going to give them any big plays. And he's going to make them eat up the clock and go down the field before they score. Leland McElroy and Cliff Gross in at running backs. Out of the eye formation on first and ten. They end up there on 32. Fake to McElroy. Pollock completes it on the near sideline to his tight end, Short. Pretty play that time. They snuck Short out from a flex look. Worked them on the backside that time. Just a little out route. Pretty play, pretty throw, pretty catch. Greg Sharp, a senior from San Antonio, and he really is the guy they go to more often than not when they do throw He's the, the man, and we haven't seen that to him too many times a day. A&M with a first down. They've moved it out to the 48. Play action again. Pulling under pressure. And he completes it again to Sharp. It's working now, and they're in Oklahoma territory at about the 31. Well, there it is. They're rolling out. They're giving Pullock some, some mobility there. There's an Oklahoma player down back up field. Gain of 21. Just a play action. Play action counter. He's rolling out to the right. He's got some pressure on him, but everything's on rhythm here, and Sharp is open. They're finding the seams in this defense. Mike Coates is the injured player. He was chasing Pullig and pulled up, apparently pulling a hamstring in the process as Pullig got the ball off to short. And that could be a big loss for the Sooners as he's the senior leader on that defense. So while he's attended to, we'll take a break and return in just a moment. minutes of playing time left. Steve Zabriskie and Ron Pitts with you from Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners lead it 20 to 7 over the Texas A&M Aggies. And the third quarter really belonged to A&M. They got a turnover from the Sooners to get their only touchdown after being held on a goal line stand. And as we start the fourth, Oklahoma has the ball again. Third down and four at the A&M 40. A&M jumping and Oklahoma snapping the ball. Very alertly, Chuck Langston, the center, snapped the ball, but we'll see if the Yankees were drawn off or not. Always have to have the obligatory officials' conference on this one. Uh, I got to say, that's to me, that looks like all AM. And that's the call. John Laurie confirms that the Yankees jumped off, were not drawn off, and the five yard penalty will give Oklahoma another first down, this time. At the AM 35. And a frustrating day for this group right here, but they came back and made it statistically a little closer with a strong third quarter. Well, the, the stat that jumps out to me, anyway, is uh, time of possession. AM is caught up. They now got 20 minutes total to OU's 24 before the, before the half ended. <laughs> it was looking dim for AM as far as possession. But AM has got to get the ball back. Oklahoma now with a first and ten at the 35. Collier. Collier running very hard inside the 25 for yet another first down. Antonio Shorter on the stop. 
Let's go down again on the sidelines to Dean Blevins. Guys, Watson Brown is Oklahoma's first-year offensive coordinator. He's on the field the first time in Oklahoma modern era that an offensive coordinator has been on the field. He waggles in the play. We'll get a shot of it here. He's down the field about 40 yards, so this isn't a great look, but he will waggle the plays into Kale Gundy. He loves being down here because he can feel the game. He can holler at his quarterback. He has had an emphatic impact on this Oklahoma offense. Thank you, Dean. The other thing I think that's good about that is we've seen a number of shots of he and Gary Gibbs standing together and talking, and that's got to help to some degree. Yeah, well, when things go bad, Gibbs knows where to go. So. <laughs> Holly with a big run for another first down, and this is Thomas Allen. James Allen picking his way. Made the most with what he had. And get short yardage on first down. Lance Tackleman, the nose guard on the stop. I don't know if you saw it, but I kind of saw some shades of Joe Washington right there for a split second, the way he bounced off and cut back. And He does have a similar running style, James Allen does, to little Joe of about 20 years ago here at Oklahoma. Feet wide apart. Low center of gravity and extreme quickness. Extreme quickness. Very deceptive, too. He doesn't look as quick as he actually is because I see a lot of good football players out there missing on tackles. Dwayne Chandler, number 32 in at fullback. He is the long setback behind Gundy on second down. And a pitch to Chandler. Well, I guess it was not to Chandler. It was to Allen. Although, I don't know. Allen picked it up on the bounce. They got some quick penetration that time that forced Gundy to maybe pitch a little bit earlier than he wanted to. But regardless of that, OU's got to settle down now. They got to understand what's happening. You got 13 minutes and running in the last quarter. You're up 20 to 7. You know, hold on to that football. Get a field goal. Once again, make these people work. They mark it at the 23, so it'll be third and nine. 13 minutes left in the game. DJ Mills comes in at wide receiver. Gundy completes to Mills who took it away. DJ Mills down to the two. Donovan Greer nearly had an interception and somehow Mills came up with the ball. Inside man to man. He's up on about five yards. Not bad coverage here. This ball should have been intercepted. I'm surprised Gundy threw it. This ball should be going the other way. It went right through his hands. Good job of Mills keeping his eye on it. Makes Hendricks miss, and he's up the field getting ready to score. And you saw Watson Brown on the sidelines there. I think he's going crazy because don't throw that ball to that wide side of the field like that when you've got that much air. Either throw it on the line hard, throw it sooner, don't. Put that much air under that ball right now. If it hadn't been for a great play by Mills, Oklahoma would not be down here threatening again. Gundy scores. Well, I think he made up for that uh, <laughs> that almost interception. That was a great move, too. Great, great fake on the option. Hale Gundy has done a better job today running the option than at any time in his career at Oklahoma. They got a full house backfield. You can see right here he's going to option the DB. I don't know. I don't know. I would have gone for that one. <laughs> well, he committed to the pitch man, and Gundy saw it and appropriately cut it upfield for the touchdown. Blanton with another extra point. 12 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the game. Oklahoma now back to a 20-point lead as Gary Gibbs and company lead 27 to 7. Option football is assignment football. Number 40, Hendricks, he's got the pitch man. He's okay, but the problem is Greer, the freshman, he takes the pitch man too. Gundy puts a nice move on him. Goes right up the field, touchdown. That capped a 64-yard drive in nine plays. And just when the AM wrecking crew defense needed to stop an OU drive, they again were unable to do so. And Oklahoma 27 to 7 as Blanton will kick it off to Leland McElroy and Typhoon McMullen. This time Scott Blanton will be kicking into that strong win. And he drives it. Still out of the end zone. What a leg on Scott Blanton. 
Yeah, it's amazing. This guy does everything, too. He kicks off, he, you know, he punts, he does all that, still gets it out of there. I'll tell you what, the kicking game, Ron, has been a big part of this game today in addition to the field position, but then generally the kicking game leads to field position. Well, Coach Gibbs, he leaned back in his chair real slow and looked up into the air when, when I asked him about kicking game. And he said, special teams wise, Ron, we're going to have to make something. And they've got to change a quarterback here. Tommy Aaron Preston, Hill. the sophomore out of College Station, is in at quarterback, replacing Corey Pulley. Thomas breaking tackles and getting free. Rodney Thomas had one man to beat. He broke that tackle, but Beavers finally hauls him down. You know, I was just getting ready to say, has RC conceded this game by putting Preston in? A 46-yard run by Rodney Thomas. That'll hold up against any pass play almost. Oh boy, I tell you. I got to attribute it to just bad tackling. They get some good blocks right there. Right there, they don't wrap up. They don't wrap up. They don't wrap up here. And he's still running. This guy's only 200 pounds, but he sometimes runs like he's about 230. Leland McElroy cannot get away from Mario Freeman. Good open field tackle that time by Freeman. A lot of air for McElroy to, to get around. He just faces it up and gets, gets him on the ground. Preston is 6'3 and 215 pounds. He played a little bit, as you see, last week, completing two of three for only six yards. Looked a little bit shaky last week. I was surprised when he got in there late in the game. I don't know how much uh, RC will want to pass with him, you know? They just want to keep running the football. They have second down and 10 at the Oklahoma 34. Preston passing, McElroy in the flat, has the first down. Dragged down at about the 22 by Aubrey Beavers. Let's go down again to Dean Blevins. Guys, the AM offensive coach is telling their linemen to pick up the pace. Now, one factor here to keep in mind, we'll take a look at the OU sideline. Now, for the first time since 1972, OU is on the west side. They're in the shaded area right now. And I can guarantee as we pan over and take a look at the AM side, in the sun, it is much hotter. Might be a factor. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dean. In the shadows are the sooner. It is warm down there, to say the least. First and 10, AM. McElroy. Cutting it back inside the 20 to about the 19. Dragged down by David Campbell. And Terrell Peters. One thing OU can't do, they can't think that this kid can't throw the football because he can and he can also run. Rodney Thomas back in at tailback. RC Slocum has AM on the move. Do they have enough time? Under 10 and a half minutes to play. Second down and eight. Thomas, big hole. Inside the 10. First down at about the eight. Larry Bush and John McGee making the tackle in the secondary. They brought Tyrell Peters that time on an inside stunt. He ran over the fullback, almost made the tackle. But, you know, if he doesn't get there, then that lane is wide open. I'll tell you what, this, this is Rodney Thomas's quarter. He's now carried 20 times for 104 yards. And has been the main man here in the fourth. First and goal. Fullback, Gross. Gross breaks a tackle and is down near the two. Well, we heard from Dean Blevins that that offensive line has been told to pick it up a notch. They certainly have in this drive. The ball came loose. It would appear that A&M has retained possession. Cliff Gross may have recovered his own fumble. And they're ruling he was down before the ball came out. The ground, in this case, the artificial turf, <laughs> cannot cause a fumble. Darius Johnson's going to argue he's one of the defensive co-captains. But the ball remains in the possession of AM. It is second and goal. And tight ends are in. And timeout. Now the officials just said, wait a minute, we have to reset and start the clock. So they made AM go back to the huddle. Second and goal from the two. 
Short play in Keenan, three tight ends for the Aggies. Rodney Thomas trying to run off tackle, and there's Mario Freeman again. Terrell Peters also in on the play. Boy, Mario Freeman's all over this field. I don't know what kind of you know, expectations they had of him coming into this game, but you're going to see him right now at the inside linebacker position. He's just running through people. Fighting through traffic, making plays. He's all over the field today. And after Rodney Thomas was dragged down by Mario Freeman, 280-pound David Campbell fell on top of him. Third down and goal, and now it's back near the three. Thomas again. He has the corner touchdown. Hayward Clay, one of the reserve tight ends with a fine block to spring Rodney Thomas free. And Thomas, the main man in this entire drive, scores a touchdown. You're going to see Shankle come up field right now, try to force something. He gets glanced, which is not what you want to do. Then DeQuazy is just getting blocked one on one. You're going to see him right back in the end zone there. No outside support. Anderson can't get over there in time to touchdown. Terry Venatulius in to attempt the extra point. And it is good. We have eight minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the football game. AM is back in it. It's 27 to 14, Oklahoma. During the course of a college football game, the players may go through a lot of elastic wrap and adhesive tape, but in the stands here at OU on an average day, they sell tons of hot dogs, 50 tons of ice, and look at that soda. On a day like today, they're probably going to do even more than that. Well, even though those guys are fortunate enough to be in the shade, it looks like they've gone through some concessions. I'll tell you what, I know some players down there that have probably gone through a little bit of water, too. <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's hot down there. And they work hard all week to, to keep the water in them and, and to keep in good shape, but you know how that is. Come game day, you're putting it all out there, putting it all on the line. Well, you can see that Rodney Thomas is losing a little perspiration. <laughs> he just took over on that drive. He has over 100 yards rushing. Benetulius will kick it off to either P.J. Mills or Michael Thompson. And it's... P.J. who takes it in the corner of the end zone, the touchback will bring it out to the 20. Well, this is a big series. There's a penalty flag down, by the way, back near the A&M 40-yard line. Most likely offsides. Hard to say. Offside, kicking team. So we'll see what Oklahoma likes to do. But right here, as soon as this is sorted out, with the Sooners getting the ball, R.C. Slocum's defense needs to do something. A one, two, three, and out. Force a turnover, do something, and get the ball back to their offense as quickly as possible. Well, right here in the first quarter, first half, rather, Oklahoma. Huge, huge difference. And then you go to the second half, it's almost like a complete turnaround. They say A&M is a better team in the second half, and they're even a better team in the fourth quarter. Isn't that right, Steve? Let me give you this score. A&M last year outscored its opponents 112 to 33 in the fourth quarter alone. Okay, and then what about last week? They were nothing, nothing in the first half in the LSU game? Exactly. All the scoring was done in the second half. Everyone going away. I think it's safe to say this one is not over yet. The penalty will move the ball back to the 30. Vanatulius will have to kick it again. And again, P.J. Mills and Michael Thompson are back for Oklahoma. This time, they're hoping they can get a run back out of it, even though, remember, that strong wind is at Venetulius' back. P.J. Mills, deep in the end zone. He will not run it out. No flags this time, so the Sooners should have it first and 10 at the 20. 8.46 left in the game. We talked earlier about the problem of non-conference games, especially in away games or neutral sites. For a &M. Now, that's not a bad record, 17. That's not. not real bad, but yeah, it is a little difference, you know. It, it's a little bit. Not real bad. Dwayne Chandler at fullback. 
replacing Collier. James Allen at tailback. Corey Warren in motion. Allen. Big hole. He slips as he tries to cut at the 28. Covered right there by Mike Hendricks, the strong safety. You know, that's something he'll learn as he gets a little bit older, and you don't want to take any natural abilities away from a good running back. But he's going to learn to get his feet underneath him a little bit more and learn to come under control. You're going to see a hole right here. It's just unbelievable. Look at look what they did to Tackleman. Great hole. The ISO 37. And he's up and running. If he just gets under control here a little bit, and I understand he had some heat coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. Looks like he easily hurt his ankle right there. He planted that foot and went right out from under him. You know, at practice yesterday, I saw a lot of the guys wearing tennis shoes out on this turf. It's not real thick turf. It's pretty low to the ground, pretty hard. Actually, we have an AM player that's being attended to, and it's Larry Jackson, who tripped over Allen when he fell down. You can see Jackson the shoes was, that the guys are wearing. That's there. right. Jackson, Jackson was a player. And that often happens because Jackson, not expecting Allen to go down, is chasing him, and then all of a sudden, Stumbles over him. So it looked like Allen might have been hurt, but it turned out to be Jackson. It's going to be second down and a yard to go. As James Allen gained nine. Oklahoma running backs have been known to twist some ankles. Allen has gained 64 yards on 16 carries. Oklahoma's talking about maybe going to natural grass here in the future. Chandler going for the first down and getting it in the grasp of Keith Mitchell, number 23, as he gets across the 30. And I'm going to bring at least one linebacker each time now. I see they're in a, a blitz look that time. Corners, safeties screwed down man to man tight. Offsides, AM. Offsides. Defense, five yards, first down. Well, that'll wipe out the carry and give OU the first down on the penalty. And the word from the sideline is that Larry Jackson, number 37 for AM, may have suffered a concussion when he went down. And of course, they're not going to take any chances with that. Clock running with seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the game. Oklahoma leading 27 to 14. Reggie Graham replaces Jackson at linebacker for AM. On first down, Allen bouncing off one and getting out to about the 38. Reggie Graham, who came into the game, made the tackle. Let's go down to Dean Blevin. Well, Steve, a minute ago you mentioned the surface. This surface, this artificial one, was put in in 1981. A committee is evaluating it right now, and there's a real good chance that Oklahoma will go to a grass surface next season. They are making that determination now. But a lot of people think that you don't have any injuries on grass. But in fact, Jeff Frazier, the starting tailback, three days before the season opener, blew out a knee on grass on the practice field in a non-contact drill. It can happen anywhere, anytime. That's for sure, Dean. All it takes is one wrong step. And the camps are probably pretty equally divided over whether to go to grass or yeah, of course. replace the turf. Second down. Chandler breaking free in the secondary and getting a first down. Banging it into AM territory. Chuck Langston, the center, with another good job up front to spring it. This play has been in Oklahoma's playbook for so long. I can remember seeing it with Billy Sims when they did it absolute best. You're going to bring counter OT. That's what it is. And they're getting ear hole shots on the guys coming across the line of scrimmage. And it opens up big holes just like that one. Harry Stamps also with a good block, number 76, 290 pound tackle for the 210 pound sophomore, Dwayne Chandler. I'll tell you what, this crowd is awful quiet, aren't they? Well, they're pretty happy, I think. Sitting back satisfied right now. <laughs> AM fans that are here are trying to exhort their defense and they need to stop this drive. Allen gets around the corner. Down near the 40, tripped up by Aaron Glenn in the secondary. Hey, we want to remind you that it's just one day till Super Sunday in the premiere of one of the shows you've been waiting for, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. It premieres tomorrow night on ABC at 7 Central Time. It's a bird, it's a plane, no. 
It's a running back. <laughs> There's your future cheerleader. Hey, I'll bet, you know, it's a tradition when A&M scores that the dates kiss in the stands. Right, right. I think there are a lot of other schools that do that, too. I think so. I think so. There might have been some going on at OU <laughs> fans with the scoring they've done today. Second down, about four yards to go. Allen again, looking for an opening and finding one. Ball down in the secondary by Donovan Greer, but it's another first down for Oklahoma. Up front, they seem to be getting a hat on the people they need to get hats on. But right here, Allen just does a good job of ad lib. Greer makes a good one on one tackle out there. Right here, you're going to see everything start off to the left side of your screen. He's designed to cut back, but not quite this far. He runs away from Atkinson, which is surprising. Greer, good job setting your feet, moving your feet, getting in front of the man, making a good open field tackle and a very good running back. Oklahoma now with over 200 yards rushing, 202 to AM's 143. Sooners first and 10 at the AM 30. On again. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all as AM got excellent penetration. Keefa Chatham, number 99, and 89, Edward Jasper, a redshirt freshman in there. Keefa Chatham, a senior out of Waco. You can see the Aggies right now starting to stun a little bit. Somebody diving over the top there, trying to make anything happen. <sighs> never say never, but boy, I tell you, as time rolls down, it's getting close. A reminder that if time permits today, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report, featuring scores and highlights from all across the country, bringing you up to date on college football as usual. Gundy running off the left side, picking up short yardage. Jason Atkinson. And Junior White, the free safety on the stop. Clock well, you can see to run. Pardon me, Ron, with 350 to go in the game. You, know, you can see. You can always tell when something goes wrong because Watson Brown, he just he lets everybody know. And that last play, that last fumble, he jumped all the way out to the numbers, <laughs> almost. I think they had to pull him back in with his headset. Well, the officials already had to stop play one time to get Oklahoma back on their sideline, and Watson Brown may have been the number one offender. Three and a half minutes to go. Oklahoma chewing up yardage in the clock. Allen tripping over his own man. Falls forward for a couple. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. And probably Blanton. Fourth down. See, OU accomplished what they wanted to accomplish in this drive. They took some time off the clock. The clock is still running right now. And now they're going to line up for uh, looks like a field goal. They're probably going to let it run all the way down until they get a delay of game. AM has two timeouts remaining. Uh, they, they've made a change here. Uh, Gundy's uh, back in. Yeah, they took Blanton out now after Blanton went in and set up. And Gundy is back out on the field. Now, timeout called by Oklahoma. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. It is the Sooners, 27 to 14, and not much time remaining. As Oklahoma called the timeout, then decided to go ahead and go for the field goal. Joey Alfred will do the holding, the senior from Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And Blanton, who had one blocked, but hasn't hardly missed any, will hit it a 42-yard attempt. And it is good. What a leg possessed by Scott Blanton. He makes it 30 to 14. Oklahoma with 238 left to play. Well, they did just what they wanted to do. Go down the field, eat up a lot of clock, like I said before, and kick the field goal. Blanton, good job. We'll return to Norman for the final two minutes and 38 seconds. AM will have the ball when we come back. Recently, Boomer Esiason tried to bet a few of his friends that they couldn't eat just one laced potato chip. I bet you can't. Oklahoma just went on a drive that ended in a field goal, but more importantly, ate up six minutes of time in the fourth quarter. 
as they have dominated this game. R.C. Slocum's wrecking crew defense, for the most part, has been unable to stop Gary Gibbs and Watson Brown's offense. Leland McElroy and Typhoon McMullen back for AM. And McElroy stopped by McMullen from returning it out of the end zone. And the Aggies will get it first and 10 with 2.38 to go from the 20 yard line. You know, it's always a bad sign when you see the head coach with his with his headset off and RC that time he had his headsets off so I'm pretty much thinking he knows this one's uh, in the bag for the other team and it's time to get on back home and regroup. Well they're going to bring Tommy Preston the sophomore quarterback back in for this series. He took him down the field on the previous possession here in the fourth quarter. And he's going to throw on first down with protection. Intercepted. Darius Johnson inside the 10. The wrecking crew may be wearing red today. Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> well, there's, there's no feeling like that right there. This is a tipped pass. He had a lot of time. Preston, I mean, maybe he should have taken up and run the football. He's coming over to Miller and man-to-man -man coverage. Darius Johnson really not in great position. He's kind of trailing, but it's a tip ball. He gets it, and now this is when he's at his best right here. Good job of running after the throw. You're going to see it here. Look like Freeman. No. Tyrell Peters tips it. Coming over the middle as a linebacker in the hook zone. First and goal, a 34-yard return. And from the nine-yard line, touchdown, Chandler. <laughs> Dwayne Chandler just put an exclamation point on Oklahoma's victory over AM with 2.22 left to play. And the extra point to come, it is 36-14 Sooners. And this may very well be, certainly at this point in his fifth year, Gary Gibbs' biggest victory at Oklahoma. They're in a single bet sec, delay draw, up the middle. Everybody's got a hat on everybody. Chandler's going to say that was easy. Blanton adds yet another extra point to make it 37-14 Oklahoma. Wayne Chandler, a sophomore from Aberdeen, Mississippi. And the Sooner Schooner has been busy today. The wheels are about to come off that thing. The ponies are getting tired. <laughs> yeah. CFA College Football here on ABC Sports being brought to you today by Lexus Luxury Automobiles. The result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Fram Oil Filters. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. Oklahoma band among many enjoying this game here in Norman today. Well, I hope they are because they came and woke us up last night. <laughs> that was a pretty early wake Boy, up call. Yeah, about 5 30 a.m. Now they're making just about as much noise right now. Yeah, yeah. At least they're consistent. It has been all sooner since the first quarter. AM with two touchdown drives and the yardage 144 yard difference in total yardage Oklahoma with 384 against that wanted A&M defense Scott Blanton to kick McElroy McMullen again deep and again even against the wind Blanton puts it deep in the end zone and this time McElroy stops McMullen from returning. I'm surprised they haven't tried to take at least one of those out. I mean, hey, 30. what do you got to lose? Yeah, what do you got to lose? I think McMullen really wanted to return that one. Yeah, it looks like he's giving him the business there. 2.22 remaining, and tonight, game three of our triple header, number 12, Washington at Ohio State, the 16th ranked Buckeyes. Two top 20 teams at 7 Central, 6 Mountain. Game three of our college football triple header for you on ABC Sports tonight. 
Detron Smith and Leland McElroy in the backfield. McElroy, big hole. Out to about the 28 or 9 on first down. Dragged down by Paul Oates, number 55, who's in there at linebacker, a sophomore out of Gainesville, Texas. And Larry Bush, the free safety, number 31. Starting to see some substitutions now in the secondary for Oklahoma. The snap out of the shotgun. Well wide of Tommy Preston. Oklahoma score. scores. Paul Oates. Unbelievable. And look at the Oklahoma sidelines. It's 37-14, or it was. And now look at them. They, they, you know, it's like they're getting better and better as the game goes on here. They want more. They want to see 50 today, I guess. Chris Dowson, the center, a senior for A&M, and a very good center. Inexplicably, with a bad snap. And the young sophomore quarterback, Tommy Preston, was running for his life. Maybe it was Preston's. Oh, he got the snap. Preston had his back. Let's look at it again. Yeah, I believe Actually, this is the play here. Here it is. It's just a shotgun snap, and it looked like a punt snap. And the mistake that Preston makes here is a get on the ball. Yep. I understand it's late in the game. You're down by a lot. Make something happen, but hey, get on the football and avoid this right here. And what a thrill for Paul Oates, who doesn't play that much. 6'3", 230, a sophomore. Not only did he make a tackle on the previous play, but he breaks through to pick up the fumble and score. Timeout called. Terrence Brown, the backup quarterback, in there for Oklahoma, and then immediately calling timeout. The Sooners have one timeout remaining. Brown is a redshirt freshman from Fort Bend, Texas. And they were lining up to go for two, <laughs> giving Terrence Brown a little experience. Did they, they ruled that ball down. They have ruled the ball to be down. They haven't put the score up on the scoreboard. Are, are they ruling that that was a... Uh, they ruled that he recovered it and could not advance, advance it, it beyond Dead the three. Ball. It's apparently first and goal from the three-yard line. Well... Well, it sure that's, didn't look like it on the replay. That's a on me. It didn't look like it up here. Not at all. Let's go back and look at it again. Did his knee touch? Is it his knee touched? Preston slips down trying to get it. Here comes Oates. He has it. He has it. Looks like he's over the goal line. Looked like he was over the goal line, but from the three, Michael Thompson in a tailback is stuffed by Atkinson. Atkinson, a projected first rounder. A lot of scouts are really high on him as an inside linebacker. Now let's go look at the end of the play again when Oates picked up the ball. The goal line is right there in the front of your screen. Is that ball over the goal line? It's it seems he and the ball are over the goal line. It, it seems like they're saying he can't advance it. Inside handoff, Thompson touchdown. Michael Thompson breaking tackle and banging it in. Long day for R.C. Slocum and the Aggies as the sophomore Michael Thompson out of Clovis, New Mexico gets into the scoring parade. It's 43 to 14 Oklahoma with the extra point to come. See, this is when football is fun right here. They already they already got Watson Brown with the water and all that. This is when it's fun to play football. You practice all week hard, and you want it to pay off in some kind of fashion, and this is perfect for OU right now. Scott Blanton has been busy and has, as usual, done very well. A kicking game helping Oklahoma. Thompson's touchdown and the extra point make it 44-14, to 14, a 30-point victory for Oklahoma over the favorite A&M Aggies. Who would have thought it would have turned out like this? Sure, you might have thought there would have been a 44-14 score, but uh, here's here's the drenching right here. He has no idea it's coming. He's all happy, getting congrats. <laughs> Yikes. Langston, the center, 
getting his offensive coordinator. And the Sooner Schooner may be put away for the final time. Or are they going to re, uh, re rivet the wheels back on? Hey, the ponies are looking for some water. They have been busy. Well, I'll tell you what, in all of this, Watson Brown's new offensive attack and what they've done to the wrecking crew defense of AM, we cannot overlook the job that the Oklahoma defense did today. Well, Bob Toledo, offensive coordinator for AM, he said defensively right now, Oklahoma plays a lot of percentages. They make you go down the field on them, and they don't want you to have a big play. They had some big runs with uh, Thomas, but outside of that, they have really stuck to what they were going to play, and that's what Tom Hayes said he was going to do, and they just had to, 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 to clamp down on them, stop the run, and they stopped it early enough. They let some big ones get away later, but they stopped it early enough that later on A&M just couldn't uh, use it and come back and be effective. Blanton making sure everybody gets on sides. McElroy and McMullen again back deep to receive for AM. We have just a minute and 16 seconds remaining in the game. This one's returnable by McMullen. Not to about the 28 or 9. Knocked down by Paul Oates. Okay, I guess they heard us last time because they took this one out. <laughs> so. Well, finally, Blanton's leg must be getting tired enough to where he couldn't fight through that wind to yeah. get it into the end zone. Yeah, 44 points it ought to be. Well, here's what the Sooners have remaining. This is their overall schedule. Of course, not showing you today's game. But the Big 8 and the big one with Texas, of course, always hard to pick. Yeah. Stormy Case in a quarterback. Good run by McElroy. And Leland McElroy with a first down out to about the 43. Oklahoma with pretty much the third team defense in there now. Keith Sparks, number 61, on the stop. And here's what AM has to look forward to. Of course, most of their games remaining, with the exception of the Missouri game in the Big Eight. Southwest Conference affairs, except for Louisville. By no means for AM is this any kind of uh, show of things to come in the future, but uh, you know they, they're going to have to address some problems that they've had here today and go back and, and uh, get down to business and, and get it corrected. Case pitching it to McElroy, trying to get outside. He does and stays inbounds as he gets to about the 46 of Oklahoma. You know, if you're coming into the game as a backup right now, or second team, third team, whatever it is for Oklahoma, you want to show everything you've got. You want to play well. You don't get a lot of chance. You don't get a lot of reps. You're taking all the scout team reps and practices. It's not exactly the most enlightening experience being a, a scout team player. But right now, this is their chance to shine. And even though half the people have left the stadium, you have got to go out there and do a good job and, and show why you, you should be out there. Rodney Thomas with a big game in spite of the loss. He really was the main man in the drives that led to AM's two scores with his 106 yards rushing. And, you know, Ron, how much do you think a negative effect the suspensions have had on this team? It's a hard thing to judge. Well, you know, I had, like I told you before, I had a conversation with my father Elijah last night, and I asked him that same question. And he said, you know, one thing that nobody's thinking about is what kind of effect. That talk up there and no suspension is going to have on this team. Stormy Case with his first pass. It's tipped. Is it intercepted? Yes. Picked off in the secondary after the ball was tipped. Larry Bush with the interception. And yet another turnover as time runs out. It has been a day for the Big Red that they will long remember. Our Chevrolet players of the game this afternoon, Rodney Thomas for A&M with his 106 yards rushing, and Oklahoma quarterback Cale Gundy, who had 13 of 24 for 167 yards and two touchdowns. Stay with us. We'll be back with the post-game show on ABC Sports in just a minute. 